There are three laws of thermodynamics, and they are zero, one, two, and three. We're gonna start with the zeroth law, and that is temperature exists. It's that thing that when two objects have been in contact forever, they will approach the same temperature. Temperature also affects the direction of heat flow. Affects direction of heat flow, and I'm going to call that Q, heat flow. And then, <clears throat> don't need that anymore, the first law of thermodynamics is this. That's a C, that's an S. Energy is conserved. Hey, look at these laws. Temperature exists, energy is conserved. Fancy. All right, <clears throat> of course it's specific. Of course, it's a very specific law having to do with gases and changing state or something. The state of a gas is given by this PV is, Kevin, what do you want to do? Capital N or lowercase n? Lowercase n. N, and then, well, we got to do an R then. Ugh. Okay, PV is NRT. That's probably the way you learned it anyway. And this is the energy in a gas. And so if I were to say that this is changing, I could get a change in energy of the system, delta... U will be the change of the total energy of the system. I guess, well, it's going to be U final minus U initial. And how is the state of a system going to change energy? Well, you could increase the pressure and keep the volume constant. <clears throat> How's that going to happen? Hmm. Or you could uh, increase the volume and keep the pressure constant. How the heck's that going to happen? Or you could change the temperature. Yeah, ooh, I know how that's gonna happen. If I increase the temperature, I must be adding something to it. I must be adding heat to it. And remember that in physics, we're gonna call Q positive when the system gains heat. So, if that system is gaining heat, then Q is positive, and that makes sense that the final energy will be greater than the initial energy, so the change in energy can be the heat gained by the system. So that would be, uh, let me just draw you a little sketch of that. There's like a canister of some gas right here, and it has some initial energy given by, well, NRT or PV, because they're the same thing. So that's the initial energy of the system. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking that cylinder and I'm adding some, uh, well, I'm adding some heat to it. So there's Q going in, and as a result, as a, oh, we have to be really careful with this. As a result, the temperature will increase. So the right side of the equation is pretty obvious. I don't have any change in N, this is just a constant, and the temperature increased because Q went into it. Heat, and probably something about specific heat and heat capacity and all that nonsense. But at any rate, heat went in and temperature increased. The left side of the equation, well, it's a sealed canister, yo. What's happening to the volume? Is that volume changing? No, of course not. But the pressure increased. So that's interesting. We'll talk about a lot of different ways that heat can go in and out of a system. Uh, but at this point, we're having it just increase the temperature and I guess correspondingly it has to increase the pressure. So then we result in some final energy that is greater and we say U final is, check it, U final is U initial plus the heat that's gone into the gas. <clears throat> And then there's, uh, there's something else that's interesting. This is actually the whole point why this is a useful study. A gas can do work. So here, now I have a, um, maybe a, a beaker and it, it probably has to be insulated. So I'm just gonna put a line, put a note to it and say it's insulated because I don't wanna make my drawing that complicated. It's insulated and I've got a movable piston now. Check this out. I've got a movable piston. That's not what I wanna draw. How about there? Good. So this is a movable piston and the piston is massless, thank goodness I got one of those expensive massless pistons, but on it is sitting a mass. There's a mass 
sitting on the piston, and the mass is, well, what would happen if the volume changed of this gas in here? We're gonna call this the initial energy of the gas in here. It's going to be Ui, there's a gas in here. And if the energy of this gas changed, ooh, wait, what if the volume changed? Let me get you a little bit of PV is nRT again. If the volume increased, then the pressure could decrease, but that doesn't make much sense. We know that this movable piston is not going to allow the pressure to change because the pressure is going to be this force divided by the area of the piston and the force is given by mg, right? So the pressure is going to be constant. If the volume increases, then you can bet that something must have happened to it. But perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's say that the volume changed and the piston went up Oh man, I have to switch all these colors. Yeah, the piston went up. And so the gas, I guess, is a little bit more spread out. Because I'm not changing N. I'm never going to change N for these experiments right here. I'm going to put that mass still on top and we notice that work has been done. The gas did work because MGH. There is more gravitational potential energy present now than there was earlier. So we can conclude that, get ready to conclude, we're going to conclude a little bit, we're going to conclude that up here, up here the gas having done work, I'm just drawing the whole thing again, it's kind of ridiculous. The gas having done work brings us to this final state, U final is well, it's going to be our initial energy of the gas minus the work done by the gas. So let's see, Q greater than zero means system gains heat. Q less than zero, system loses heat. What about work? Work greater than zero, a positive work, means that the system does work. And a work less than zero means that uh, the system, let me see if I, I can't think of any quick way to say this, system has work done on it. Um, okay, so in this case, work is positive or negative. When the mass goes up, then the system has actually done positive work. So it, oh, consequently, it has lost energy. So something about this PV is NRT must have decreased. I guess the temperature could have decreased. Oh, yeah, it could have. Um, did the volume decrease? Nope. The pressure decrease? Nope. So we're going to have to try to justify why this would happen, but probably this would result in a lowering of the temperature. But we'll be much more careful about this the next time we go through it. I just want to point out that if the system does positive work, then its energy will be decreasing. Check this out. System does positive work, then its energy has decreased. We can put these all together into the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law says the change in energy of the system. That's this energy right here. The change in the state of the energy of the system is the heat that flowed into the system that would increase the energy of the system minus the work done by the system. That's that would tend to decrease the energy of the system. Obviously, if the system is giving you usable energy, then it has decreased its own energy. And if you're giving it heat, then you've increased the system's energy. All right, I think this is a very fair equation. Let's put it in green, get a little flower pot going here. And then um, what else? Do we need anything else? I think that's about all I want to say about that. You just need to think about this because it's a little more subtle than you think it is. Make sure you're clear on these definitions. These guys right here, these guys depend on how you get there. These guys are path dependent, which is actually the reason that internal combustion engines can exist because these are path dependent. And this guy right here is not path dependent. It's called, um, well, it's a state function. So remember we had this equation of state? 
this is the equation of state and this is a state function because it just depends on how the gas is at any instant. This depends on what the gas is doing or getting and this depends on what the gas is doing. Bye.